My name is Gary Butterfield. My name is Cole Ross. And you're listening to Watch Out for Fireballs. It is a Games Club podcast. And this week we are talking about Neon Struct, uh, Die Augen der Welt, uh, which is a stealth game developed and published by Minor Key Games for PC in 2015. Yeah, the eyes of the world. Yes. Uh, um, there are other games with the Neon Struct name, uh, and mm-hmm. it is worthwhile to clarify we're talking about the main one. It's true. Yeah, it's the Neon Struct Extended Universe. <laughs> um, yeah, this is a replacement for Project Snowblind um, because I was running into intolerable crashes on that if you missed the Patreon post. Yes. Um, so there are people who aren't on our Patreon. Mm-hmm. You, know? you know, first of all, how dare you? Uh, just kidding. <laughs> uh, the, uh, but just in case this is a surprise, uh, basically what happened was despite doing all these fixes, I was running into very frequent crashes, mm-hmm. having to repeat content. Um, Project Snowblind, and there is a PS2 port of it, uh, which we could have shifted to, but I was mad at it. <laughs> so we're going to do that next year. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. At some point. Uh, it was just very frustrating. Old games. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, especially that that era of Eidos. It's like around Invisible War era a little bit in terms of the port. Uh, so it does the thing that the Eidos games of that era do where when it transitions levels, like you go to desktop. Uh-huh. Like I think it starts a new instance of the game. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's just, uh, it's, it's really held together as spit and glue. Yeah. Basically any game published between like 2002 and 2009 that is on PC, uh, is a real crap shoot, whether or not it yes. is going to work. Yeah. So, uh, kind of got hoisted on that. It's also a hard thing for people who, anybody who's frustrated with this. I don't think there are tons of like snowblind heads out there, mm-hmm. but anyone who's frustrated, it's an, it's a frustrating thing to, um, test for uh-huh. because you could run the game and the game will work fine. Mm hmm. Like, oh, this is, this is great. Like I put in the, the, you know, the widescreen mod, everything looks good. I got rid of the blur. Yeah. You know, I, I did all the stuff, but then it's like 30 minutes in and it's a game with uh manual saving. There aren't checkpoints. Mm-hmm. So when you lose progress, you lose a lot of progress <laughs> uh, in that game. Yeah. So. I don't know. I think this is on steam for selling games that just don't work. Uh, yeah. would be one of those things. That's a, that's a thing too. 100%. Yeah. Like, you know, buyer beware. Uh, but, uh, happy coincidence. I got you, you know, getting a chance to talk about, uh, a little game that I'm a cheerleader for. Yeah. Um, Neon Struct. Neon Struct. Uh, this is a game you play as special agent Jillian Clary, um, who works for an unnamed U S organization, uh, and runs afoul of her handlers, gets burned and ends up on the run at trying to clear her own name. Yeah. Uh, and this is an M sim. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is one of the few, you know, immersive sims are one of the genres that have not made their way to indie. Mm-hmm. This is a stripped down, very short immersive sim. Uh, each mission takes place in a really open level. You don't have a lot of guidance on how to achieve your object- objectives. You have multiple ways of ingress uh, for things. Uh, you know, it doesn't have the, you know, the dynamic world yeah. bits of that, but it's definitely uh, going thief. Yes. Uh, you know, it's a little less Deus Ex, a little bit more thief. But it is like an indie thief. Yes. Uh, and that is a, a very obvious example. You know, we'll talk about the mechanics around the stealth, but also uh, the developer for those, David Pittman, said like, yeah, I was trying to make thief, you know, but, you know, better thief, modern thief. 
kind yeah, of you know, little thief, stuff. little thief, yeah, yeah. baby thief, baby thief, yeah, artful dodger, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but this is uh, an immersive sim with a high emphasis on stealth. Uh, Jillian is not a fighter. There's no combat with guards or the drones that come after her. This is kind of a cyberpunk sci-fi kind of deal, although it does take place in 2015, the year the game came out. Mm -hmm. Um, Yes. Instead, what you have is a bunch of thief-like tools for manipulating situations. Yes. Uh, So you can, your main offensive gadget is you have a grenade that can scramble a guard's perception. Everybody wears these, uh, these goggles. Mm Mm-hmm. Basically, everyone wears Google Glass. Um, but you can also create patches of darkness. You can teleport yourself to a location. Uh, and then uh, things that change your speed and how quiet you are. Mm-hmm. So that that's very old school thief. <laughs> I take the that drug respect. that makes me walk real silent. <laughs> it's a, I don't know if you found it. There's the um, there's a weird, the strangers in this. A couple of them start poking holes in the story where I think that it's kind of hinting that you're maybe in a simulation. Yes. Yeah, I did find uh, a yeah. bunch of the strangers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, they're like, why, how come you, why can you take an injection that makes you invisible to other people's naked eye? <laughs> you know, like, think about it. And then when you ask, you, you, you click again, it's just like, you already know the answer. <laughs> I'm like, shit. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah. It goes all the way uh, to the top. <laughs> yeah. Uh, ominous uh, here. Um, so yeah, it, it's very Thief. And like Thief, uh, stealth is based on light and sound. Mm -hmm. So you have a light meter, uh, similar to Thief's uh, interface, whether you know how visible you are uh, in this. Um, And this kind of impacts, uh, you can be partially lit. This is a whole gradient. And it can uh, impact the distance in which guards will spot you Mm -hmm. if you're in line of sight. So if it's total darkness, they can walk right up to you. Uh, nothing can happen, but if you're a little bit lit, uh, you know, you have a, a certain amount of leeway. There. Kind of like driving. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exa- <laughs> no, exactly. Sorry. Yeah. No, don't drive. Yeah, play, drunk, play Space Invaders. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, um, yeah, it, it is very thief like. It does lead to some kind of goofy situations where, like, I'm just standing out here in the open, but because the light meter is dark, uh, this guy can just walk close enough to smell me. Stare at you. <laughs> yeah. We, we, we'll talk about the, um, the kind of limitations on the AI. Yeah. Of yeah. this, which is probably, you know, it's the thing that makes this not better thief, mm-hmm. right? Like, you know, making a small indie thief and to my mind, really importantly, a bite-sized thief. Mm-hmm. Like, one of the reasons why we haven't done the original thief games for the show is they're, they're so all too fucking, fucking big. Long. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I like those games. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I haven't, I haven't beat uh, Thief 1 or 2. Mm-hmm. Like, that, that's my immersive sim shame. But part of it's because about two thirds of the way through, when it seems like it should end, they throw the worst level you've ever seen at you mm-hmm. uh, in each of them. Yeah. So like it's, it's on the list. I'm going to do it, uh, but they're long. This mm-hmm. is, this is five hours. Yeah. Uh, and that's, that's not rushing. No, you know, it, it is a bite sized uh, experience like that. Part of that bite sizedness only comes through with kind of limited AI. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it kind of creates with the aesthetic, it creates kind of an arcade. Yes. Feeling to this to me. Like uh, I think it, it's in service of its abstractions. Mm hmm. Um, which we'll, we'll get into. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, when I talk about, oh, them walking right up next to you, it's not necessarily a ding. It is just, if you think about this as uh, trying to simulate anything in real life, it is, you know, that that's when it falls apart. Thinking about it, it works as really a, well, if you think as of it as a, a simulation, yeah, as, as a, as a stealth game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's still a stealth game or as in the world, a simulation. Yes. You know, cause that plays with the aesthetics and there are hints at it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, so this light system means that the levels are painted with these paths of shadow and figuring out how to follow those paths or get around in between them uh, while avoiding or managing the guards uh, patrol paths. Uh, that's the entire game. Yep. Uh, getting past stuff. Uh, each level has an incentive that I think is pretty clever mm-hmm. for exploring uh, these geocaches that you sign. And when you get them, you get a little challenge coin. Uh, this is part of the scoring criteria for the game, but you get a coin that you can throw like Hitman. Mm-hmm. And these are limited. Yes. Uh, you're not increasing your max. There's five of them in each level. If you want to throw five coins at level, you have to find your five mm-hmm. geocaches. Um, I ended up with a surplus of them. Same. You know, I ended up using that much. But I, I can imagine this, uh, you know, it, I think it plays with that tension in an interesting way of like too good to use. Yeah. You do feel like you're giving up something because it's not a renewable resource. Mm-hmm. And also like, I'm not a person who goes for collectibles in games. Neither yeah. of us are. That is, you know, a known thing, but, uh, I'm never disappointed when I find one of these, uh, yeah. you know, and you find them primarily just by engaging with the space and looking for, looking for your objectives. There is no in-game map. There are no objective markers or anything. You are just kind Kind of following the design of the level and occasionally yes. it will lead you to one of these just kind of off in a corner and i feel like a very you know a very very smart good boy uh for yeah, uh for, for, for getting, getting them. them yeah and yeah. you know the coins are good 
you know, yeah, it's, it's, it's useful. The, the way these guards are idiots and can't see something right in front of them. If it's dark, mm-hmm. I know how to use the bathroom at night, <laughs> these guys. but they also, if they hear a coin, no matter what's going on, they're like, Ooh, Ooh, Ooh 25 cents. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, uh, so by default, you can see the alert level of guards. Uh, it's indicated by a symbol over their head. Um, if they uh, have nothing, they don't know you're there. If they have an ellipsis, it means they've heard, seen or heard something. A question mark means they're investigating an area. And an exclamation point means they're on alert. Mm-hmm. It, it is very funny when they're in the question mark phase. Mm-hmm. Because where they do the, the, the walk. <laughs> where they, yeah, the, very, yeah. the very slow walk kind of right toward you. <laughs> yes. They, they, kind of, they kind of sneak towards you. <laughs> like they're trying to be in stealth. Yeah. It's very funny. <laughs> Uh, the guards, uh, can kill you. There's health in this. They have these sci-fi scatter guns that will do a pretty good amount of damage, but they have to be pretty close. This is not something where one person spots you and then lights you up from across the map and everybody is focusing fire and you're done. Well, it can, it can happen that way depending on the, the enemy. Yeah. Um, the level when they start introducing cops, uh, they can smoke you from across the map. Um, hmm. there's specifically, we'll, we'll talk about that encounter, yeah. um, there, but there's, uh, you know, they can smoke you across the map and the, uh, max mm-hmm. they introduced can, can take you out pretty quick. Yeah. Uh, but generally you have time and again, you know, the AI is not good. You just run away and go hide in a corner in the dark yeah, yeah. and you're fine. They, they're just like, oh, that was nothing, mm-hmm. you know? Um, the, uh, so they have, you know, they have these guns. Uh, if you have a guard out of the way. You know, if you, if they're not next to other guards, aren't going to hear anything and they're not aware of you, you can sneak up behind them and sap them. Yes. You perform a takedown. Uh, this can, uh, this can make noise. Oh, uh, this actually isn't silent as a event. Mm-hmm. Um, I've alerted guards that are within earshot. Okay. Of what's happening. Um, but the important thing is you have to drag bodies away again, yes. thief. Yes. Right. Um, if you leave it, uh, just where it's at, it's likely to be seen and guards can see it from far away. Start doing the investigation. Right. It doesn't have to be like right on their patrol route. Yeah. Um, you know, if they get alerted, then, you know, everybody else, uh, goes off of their patrol patterns and things become less predictable. And this is a game that runs, you know, the levels are designed around predictability, right? Yes. It'll, uh, it'll, it'll mess you up. Um, (laughs) you can take guards down. You can also pickpocket them. Uh, this yep. is important to get key cards, which will grant you access, uh, to different places. Some, some of which are locks that cannot be hacked. Um, you can also get money, uh, from pickpocketing and money is also in some containers around. Um, there are social levels. There are these kind of interstitial hub levels where you can buy food to restore your health. Uh, this is in addition to health stims that you can get, uh, and also buy, uh, you can buy stims and stealth gadgets kind of from black market people. Uh, yeah. around these cities there is uh one of the things i love about this is that the economy in this plays into the theming mm-hmm. because you initially start out with cash and credit uh and this is a game that has something to say about the surveillance state mm-hmm. um not anything super profound it yeah. just wants to talk about it right mm-hmm. uh so you get to the situation where you're on the run and you want to be using cash because mm-hmm. uh, you can be tracked mm-hmm. i don't know what actual consequences there are for, for some of that thing, I found a, definitely one consequence where my activity in an interstitial level made a le- the next level harder. Yeah. Uh, you know, that can Same. happen. Uh, the, uh, but I imagine if you're using your credit, mm-hmm. that can happen as well because they can, they can track you. That's kind of the, the point of this. So this, uh, it's like, a, I don't know if you have this experience, but you go to like a, a flea market or there's a convention or whatever. And it, there's just like the scummiest fucking guy in the world who, when you'll be like, uh, you know, I'd like to buy this. And they say something like cash is king. <laughs> you, you ever get a cash is king guy? Yeah. yeah some yeah. you run into a cash is king person. Uh, you, you, you run into them on, uh, on Facebook marketplace or whatever. Yes. And I'm fine. Cash cause, is king. Cause I like cash, uh, you know, oh, cash for, is fine. for that kind of thing. But yeah, it, it, <laughs> just, yeah. it's just the, the, the fucking carniest of folks yeah. who end up, who end up saying that. But in this game, it is true. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So like, th- there is that paranoia. Like, I don't think there's a way to like increase the amount of credit that you have. No, <laughs> you no, know? no. You just start with the same. You got your parade money. Yeah. You Charlie Brown money, and it's the same <laughs> until you die. <laughs> yeah, you got your parade money, and there is that sense of paranoia. There may, you know, there might be a consequence for this. It, it, it also is a delineation between a uh, legitimate vendor and somebody who is black market, which is yes. like, oh, if you go up to like a burger stand in the mall, you can use your credit there. It's just just fine. Um, but if you're trying to buy illegal stims or, uh, you know, surplus, uh, stealth Grenades. tech that fell off of the back yeah. of the truck, uh, that needs to be cash. Right. Yeah. Yep. yep. Um, you have a specific, this has hacking in it, uh, and you have this specific thing called the break-in tool or BIT. Uh, 
Mm -hmm. Um, This allows you to hack doors, uh, security devices, cameras, things like that. Uh, And the hacking game is one I have not seen before. Uh, It's Breakout. Mm -hmm. Um, You play a little Game Boy Watch version of Breakout. (laughs) Um, The, uh, you know, this is something it's, it's reminds me a little bit of Pipe Dream. Yeah, you know, in, in yeah. Bioshock, where like I like Pipe Dream, but you get a little sick of it. Mm-hmm. You get a little sick of Breaking Out. And it's like I love Breakout, mm-hmm. you know. But it's just uh, I haven't. That's novel. Yeah. Um. There. Uh. And it does the thing where time does not stop. Yes. So you have to make sure you're in cover when you're doing this. You can't just stand up, hack a, <laughs> you know, a camera, and then set back down. You know, unless you can do it quickly, because you're trying to do it quickly, you're taking more risks. Mm-hmm. In the breakout. If you fail, uh, that can you know most things. There's no consequence for failure, but yeah. There are alarm boxes in each level uh, that kind of control all the security in a specific zone. If you hack those, it disables the cameras, but they tend to be tougher levels of breakout. And if you fail, the whole level will go on alert. Yes, uh, it is. It, it is higher stakes. I, I, I love that it is breakout for this because there is no one solution for it. And yeah. if you want to uh, solve it quicker, all you need to do is get the ball past the bricks. Right. Yes. It just needs to to touch the top of the screen, and you can attempt to kind of play a very fast game where you are bouncing it, you know, straight up. Right. Trying to you know pierce through a column. If you're doing that, you're in a hurry, and you're probably panicking because somebody might be approaching. Uh, It does create some of these very good uh, these very good dramatic situations that something like you know the game freezing in Pipe Dream can't uh yes. you know, can't give you uh and even you know uh it's, it has a little bit more depth and dimension than the hacking in bioshock 2 which i'm a big fan of as well which is a little timing game right yeah yeah both of which the uh the thing that they share is they take place in real time mm-hmm. um that that is a good way to do that kind of thing yes that hacking i think yeah um you get grades as you mentioned and the end of level you get a letter grade um, this is checking on whether you're seen, whether alarms went off, uh, whether you took down bodies, how many bodies were found, things like that. Um, your time does not count towards this. I love uh, they want that. you to take your time. Yeah. yeah. You're not meant to rush mm-hmm. uh, through this. I also, I'm never going to, I'm not a grade, Andrew, like for this kind of thing. Like I'm a, I'm a real CB student. Yeah. Yeah. C is good you know? degrees, baby. Um. Yeah. I take people out. In, in, whenever I'm playing a stealth game, I'm not interested in ghosting. Yeah. I want to be able to explore and find these geocaches and uh, huge uh, basement freezer chest full of one hundred dollars exactly. Yes, and I, and I the um I want to get guys out of the way. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm never gonna I'm never gonna ghost a thing. Yeah, it's yeah. just not not my nature. Yeah, uh, you know, it, I am not a I am not a grade chaser, but uh, I don't know. There's something about the grade me, evaluate me, please kind of person sure. in me that like if I see an F, I think ah well I didn't. I guess I didn't play the game the way the designer wanted, even though that is a fake yeah. idea. So. Yeah, it, it, it reflects on you and mm-hmm. your personhood. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that, that's the kind of thing that follow permanent record. <laughs> yeah. Follow you to the grave. Yeah, it ruins my you credit know? score. God, you'll know <laughs> yeah. when you're when you're on your deathbed talking to your family uh, and everything. It's going to be the number three thing you bring I, up. I got an F on Mission Seven of Neon Struck. <laughs> oh no! What dementia is struck? Like, just, like, what are you talking about? <laughs> oh man, that's good. That's right. That's yeah. right. Go back yeah. to bed. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um that's about it in terms of mechanics mm-hmm. this is very stripped down um and the majority of the joy in this is the way that these kind of limited mechanics and move sets play with some very good level design right yeah level design is 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 greatness yeah um it's a uh, it's interesting because it dovetails really well interestingly with the aesthetic um the aesthetic is great it is it looks like a star fox world mm-hmm. you know like super low poly visual style uh, and it means there's very little detail in these rooms. Like a room will have, like a bedroom will have a bed and a chair mm-hmm. in it and a TV, something like that. But because of we're working in Imsim world, the layout still makes sense. Yes. You know, like it's almost like in every room, the, the visual representation of it is almost like a symbol. Mm -hmm. for it like this is the symbol for a bathroom yes you know and even though you're not getting a whole lot of detail in terms of like oh there's a skeleton in this toilet that must mean that a skeleton took a shit here (laughs) you're not getting that but you are thinking okay there's a there's a men's room here there's probably a woman's room next to this Mm -hmm. or there's a men's room here it's right next to this office i wonder if there's a vent that connects them yes because that would make sense Mm -hmm. you know like you still are doing the the one of the beautiful things that msims do which is make spaces that make fucking sense yes 
uh, which I, I love. Yeah. Um, you know, I got, I had big feelings when I was playing this, which was like, this is about as much detail as I need. Uh, yes. <laughs> you know, and obviously there are exceptions to that. A game, you know, can look beautiful and that can uh, bring a certain amount of joy to the experience. Not going to discount artistry at all, but there is artistry in this. They show just yeah. enough to let you know, you know, to, 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 to put the to put the mechanics forward and to have these spaces communicate what needs to be communicated. If there was more clutter uh, with this same amount of mechanics, that would actually feel less satisfying because that is extraneous to it, the, it, the endeavor. I think. Yeah, it, it's really um, it really is consonant with the theme theming mm-hmm. of the game. I think this uh, very chilly future, you know, the, this kind of uh, dark, but not even really like dystopian, just removed alienation. Mm-hmm you know, based future that you're in compare with like dishonored where the environments are very detailed and they're doing that to tell you about a culture. Yes. This is a world in which culture has basically been stripped away. Yep. You know, it feels like, <laughs> and that I think that's what they're going for. Yeah. You know, you're supposed to feel, feel removed from these spaces. Like a bedroom mm-hmm. is supposed to look like any other bedroom. Yeah. Um, um I, I love the people, like the, the, uh, the character models for the people, uh, they are mm-hmm. literally faceless. There are details. Yep. Like there's like a skin tone randomizer, like, you know, the, 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 the facial are, hair uh, sometimes. Yeah. They're like, they're, they're identifiable from each other, not just because of like uniforms showing what kind of enemy they are, but also like everybody has these things called Hudson's, which is like, mm-hmm. good, it's google class essentially yes. and like that is the dominant feature on everybody's face which is just this big pink thing like this big pink cyber eye right yep the main thing you see yeah you know that this interface that you have between you and the world is reducing everybody mm-hmm. you know to these things yes um i love the soundtrack for this it's great uh it is by a band called the home conversion uh, brother and sister band out of texas mm-hmm. um the music in this is really interesting there is very little um, non-diegetic music. Yeah. When you get caught, a really cool you got caught theme kicks <laughs> up. And every once in a while they will play music. But for the most part, somebody in the town is playing a radio mm-hmm. and it's a song. Like it's a pop song. It's not um a score. Yes. Kind of thing. Um this band, when I first played this game, I was just like, oh, this is my shit. Mm-hmm. Um and I looked them up thinking it was going to be like a band band. Mm-hmm. And I was going to be able to find a bunch of stuff. Not really. Mm-hmm. You can find this band on YouTube, uh, and they have a couple of the score songs on like Apple Music. But I think that they just disappeared. They might have just broken up, yeah, uh, as, as a band. But I like the songs. Like they're yeah. certified bangers. The uh, the main uh, Cave Living, which is the the vocal version of the theme song mm-hmm. part of this, I think is like a legit banger. Yeah, and that's a great song. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. It, it's it, it's good to listen to on its own, and it is very unifying with the aesthetic. Yeah. There's there's a thing you can do too since it's being played on a radio. You can interface with the radio and you can turn it off, obviously. And when you do that, it just saps all life out of like a room. Uh-huh. It goes instantly to silence in this way that is very unnerving. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's neat. Yeah. yeah. Um, for the plot, this is a pretty basic spy story. You know, yes. agent is set up, runs afoul, gets burned, uh, finds a conspiracy, brings it down. Um, a pretty standard beats, right? This is told entirely through these communi- communicator conversations, just text boxes uh, and little neon portraits of the people. Um, mm-hmm. It is also very distant and chilly and sparse yes. in the way that stuff is communicated. Um, yes. Yeah. Uh, it's, it, it's, it's a really neat effect that is difficult to put into words. You know, and it's not just when you are talking over the earpiece in those social hubs, you will talk to people and it will come across in the same interface and feel very distanced as well. Yeah. You're talking through your little Google glass, mm-hmm. you know, this, te- this tech, you know, this technology has put a wall between everybody. Yeah. You know, it's all very intentional. It's also very refreshing to play this before link between worlds. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually played link between worlds first, but link between worlds. I really love that game. Uh, it is talkier than I remember. Yes. You know, and like the, I think when I complain about things being talky, I imagine that, this is me straw manning and making up a guy, but I imagine there are people who are just like, Oh, you know, you just, you're, you're one of those gamers who just wants to get to the action and stuff. Uh, and it, you know, doesn't care about narrative and that couldn't be further from the truth. I love the alienating lonely effect mm-hmm. of quietude Yes, in a video game. Um, it's really effective. It mm-hmm. works for this. And a lot of games are you against the world. Mm -hmm. you know, in a lot of ways that I think would benefit from shutting the fuck up a little bit because I want to feel like I am a lone little guy in a big threatening place, Mm -hmm. you know, who's overwhelmed. You feel that in this game, even though you canonically have friends and stuff in 
linked to between worlds, you're a cipher. Mm -hmm. You know, you're meeting strangers and weirdos. They all act like you're your best friend. Yeah. You know, it's super kitty pilled. That game narratively should be more alienating than this. Especially. And it, take, it isn't. Be, be, being a follow up to Link to the Past, which, yes. you know, is quiet and alienating, you know, especially when you go yeah. to the other world. Right. It just has it has like two paragraphs of sage bullshit mm -hmm. you have to do every once in a while. And then you just get through it and you're like, OK, this is weird. I'm in the other world. Everything is different. This yeah. is kind of scary. I don't need comfort here. No, no. You know, and, and this game doesn't give it to you. Like, even when you're talking to people who are your friends, everything, because you have this digital remove, everything feels off. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just a much more successful tone piece for yeah. something that is such sm so smaller in scope and has so much less money behind it. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not. I'm not saying it's a better game. Yeah, yeah. You know, necessarily, it, it, the, the scope is much smaller. It's going for for less. And I love Link Between Worlds. I think it's really fun. Mm -hmm. um, this is, but it, I think it is a more, way more unified narrative aesthetic and kind of tone mm -hmm. uh, experience. Agreed. Like, yeah, significantly so. Mm -hmm. Like, kind of wildly so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Kind of, you know, basic spy story, but the modern day twist here is that this is uh, ultimately about privacy and the surveillance state. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, the, the world has a Wiki, WikiLeaks analog and everything. One of the stated goals was like, you are playing uh, somebody in a bit of an Edward Snowden situation. You know? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so Minor Key Games, the developer uh, for this, is David Pittman and his twin brother, uh, J. Kyle Pittman. Um, David Pittman has made more games as more public-facing, uh, even though you may know J. Kyle Pittman for doing uh, Super Win the Game. Mm -hmm. uh, that's their game. But they uh, they kind of both make games in this. It's like the Kinks or something. Yes. Um, and they had previously worked on Bioshock 2 and the Borderlands series. This oh. is another in our long-running uh, indie developers who fled from Bioshock 2. <laughs> <Seriously>. <laughs> yeah, a uh, little bit of a, uh, got a bit of a uh, Velvet Underground thing going on there. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, so prior to Neon Struct, uh, Minor Key Games and David Pittman had this uh, minor hit with the roguelike horror game Eldritch in mm -hmm. uh, 2013. Uh, man, I wanted to like that game more than I did. Uh, I was real put off by the roguelike structure to it. <laughs> it's too hard. Yeah. Like, like we did that for comrade too. That's how I found this, mm -hmm. you know, and it, it is too hard. Yeah. Uh, you know, in my opinion, the game they have after this as well is a little bit of a, uh, missed oh, opportunity. Yeah, I think yeah. Slayer Slayer, uh, shock is the name of that. And the idea of doing a procedural M sim kind of Buffy mm -hmm. thing where you're hunting vampires with this kind of aesthetic where rooms and buildings are more representational mm -hmm. or less representational, more like a, uh, icon based mm -hmm. is interesting. Um, I just didn't like it very much. Yeah. Like I like Eldrick just fine. I like this game a lot mm -hmm. um, and, and want it to have more attention. Uh, and I look forward to other stuff he's done. What he's basically done since then is do little itch.io mm -hmm. things like experiments oftentimes in this engine and world. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Um, so Neon Struck was the next big 3D game they had done, uh, or, you know, J. Kyle Pittman had put out the, uh, the, the win the game games. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, the main source of development detail about Neon Struct in particular, uh, is David Pittman's blog on neonstruct.com. Not, not a lot of interviews and stuff out there. No. Yeah. No, this is, this is one of the smaller things we've done. Yes. Um, uh, began development as a Diogen der Welt. Uh, you know, Eyes of the World, before taking on the name Neon Struct in May of 2014. Mm -hmm. um, and the blog, when you read about it, you can really tell that Pittman was consciously applying knowledge they learned from 2K Marin. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a lot of talk about holding himself to timelines and milestones, mm -hmm. you know, uh, taking that, uh, you know, professional mm -hmm. experience of this. Yeah, uh, which is always neat to see. Uh, you know, how people t t take that structure into something more freeform, you know, mm -hmm. uh, try to get the best of both worlds, right? Yeah. Um, uh, you know, a lot of the details in the blog are technical, uh, which is neat, you know, hearing about light and stuff. But uh, I was more looking for decision making. Uh, kind of uh, uh, writing here. Yeah. Uh, you know, you know things like oh, so the game needed to have hacking, and his process was well, these other games, including me, you know, one that I worked on, they pulled from older arcade games, right? You know, Pipe Dream, mm -hmm. etc. You know, what could I do for that? And then you know, he talks about oh, yeah, I tried like Tetris, but that was not necessarily that great to do quickly. Ultimately, settling on Breakout because it fit the metaphor very well. Yeah. Yeah, and I've never seen that before. 
Mm-hmm. And you know, it does work really well. Um, the icons for alertness state, the visual icons was a concession to not having uh, a budget for voice work. No. That's also a huge blessing. Yes. Uh, on accident. Uh, I've read this many times for games writers. One of the hardest things to do is come up with variations of cheese it. I think the bats around <laughs> like, you, had, you had to come up with like 30 different phrases that mean Batman might be nearby. <laughs> uh, and they all sound really repetitive. Mm-hmm. This is so much more elegant than that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, lastly, uh, Pittman wanted to give level design and modding tools to the fans in order to, pro- to prolong the, ge- the life of the game. Yes. Uh, I don't know how, what came of that. There is a custom game option mm-hmm. in the menu, but I haven't fucked with that. Right. Um, the game is not performed very well. Um, the, uh, Metacritic average of 63, which mm-hmm. is too low. Yeah. Uh, for this, I think, um, steam average of 87, which is about right. I think this is like a B. Yeah. Uh, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, to me, you can kind of understand, depending on what you're expecting, yeah. why this would underperform mm-hmm. uh, in that uh, perspect. I like, you um, know, in, in searching for this, you know, I found like Reddit threads that were like, Neon Struct is the worst immersive sim of all time. Uh, yeah. And worst is not the way to quantify it. Like if you're expecting Hitman or something, yeah, it's entirely, it's an entirely different <laughs> You know, you have to have like an an appetite for a stripped down version of something. Yes. Yeah. Like if you don't have that, like if you can't enjoy, you know, ham and butter on a baguette, Mm -hmm. you know, you're calling that like the worst sandwich of all time. Yeah. Like, you know, like a French sandwich like that. It just, it's a a weird thing is since this came out, like I like this when it came out since then, the idea of a short bite sized version of this genre of which there are like 10 games (laughs) uh, is really appealing to me. Mm hmm. You know, like, uh, and it's a vanishing genre, right? Like the, the worst immersive sim to me is still good is, you know, it's Deus Ex the fall, but (laughs) it's, uh, other than that, like, it's still pretty good. Uh Like, cause we don't get these, Yeah, you know, it's super rare. It's like the rarest genre we covered like more than half of them on the show. Yes. It's silly. (laughs) Like, you know, it, 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 it's just, it is a vanishing, vanishing genre. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, so not definitely not, not not the worst. That's I think an absurd thing to say, yeah. uh, but in a way that is you know just like getting into questions of what the word is means. Uh, yes, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, after this, Pittman released uh, Slayer Shock in 2016. Uh, real quick turnaround there. Like we said, you're doing Buffy Buffy stuff in small town Nebraska. I never played that, but the consensus is that it's underwhelming. Um, yeah, I yeah, I didn't, I didn't like it. Me and Nick didn't like it. Yeah. Uh, um, this game, you know, that game underperformed as well. And Pittman kind of publicly was like, yeah, I need to leave independent development because I'm not able to support myself with this. Yeah. I remember it, it was, it was, you know, I remember reading the blog well, it's heartbreaking. about it and stuff. Yeah. yeah. It's heartbreaking. It's very sad. There's kind of, um, there's a, the, a subgenre of that. Uh, mm-hmm. the guy who made, um, where the water tastes like wine. Yeah. Uh, also did that. Like you can, you can almost publish a coffee table book of essays of indie developers who are like, this shit isn't worth it. Mm-hmm. You know, like we can't, there's no way to make money outside of this marketing machine Yeah, with this, you know, and it's, it's a real bummer. Yeah. You know? Uh, he's still making games for fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, as we mentioned, um, there are games uh, just freely available on steam, uh, and on his HIO page, smaller experiments, mm-hmm. uh, there two of which are in this universe and using this engine. Yeah. Uh, carry and carrier is a speed running game and desperation column is a roguelike FPS. Mm-hmm. Uh, your character gets a gun yeah, in that, but uses the same engine and aesthetics. And, and if there are lore bits in that, they probably relate. Yeah. Uh, it, David Pittman has not left uh, game development entirely. Like his day job, I think his most recent credit on Moby games is he is working on that upcoming question mark, South Park snow day game. Um, yes. You know, hope he's getting paid. Yeah. Yeah. yeah me too. Yeah. Uh, hats off to you, David Pittman. Yes. Let's do. Uh, this is yeah. a short game that also kind of runs out of juice and changes halfway through. <laughs> I would argue, I would say that's true too. This this starts a lot stronger than it ends. Yeah. Uh, to me, um, it's one of those things where it needs to be. You know, four point nine hours. Yeah. You know, like, and my second playthrough is even shorter than that. Once I knew what to do. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a, a it doesn't support longer than that. Right. 
um, you start out in this alley uh, for your movement tutorial, you know, ducking under stuff, mantling over things. It's important that you can mantle. Uh, you know, it's you're not just confined to your jump height here. Uh, and you get a call from your handler at the agency, uh, Vinod Chibber, um, you know, saying like, okay, you have been dispatched to this country club hotel in Austin, Texas. You've got to gather some intel on some VIPs. There's this big event that's about to happen there. Um, and you know, some of them have checked in early. Yep. Uh, the, uh, and there are little twists to it. Uh, you have to do this, you have to do this, uh, pick up this Intel, put a bug in the presidential suite. And we don't know where the dead drop is for the Intel. Right. Um, it's been encoded in the hotel guest room mm-hmm. or guest book. Um, so we have things, uh, and the guests, uh, in the presidential suite suite that has already been swept for bugs. So we have to place the bug now. Yes. We couldn't do it before people got there. Right. Okay. Um, and we don't have things in this one. Um, weirdly, you, you get the sense that Jillian could use guns, but there's usually a narrative justification yeah, yeah. for it. You know, like we can't afford to have like a bunch of bodies on this. Mm-hmm. Um, also her BIT, her break in tools in the shop. Yeah. Um, so all you have is your little Hudson, you know, HUD. Yeah. She, f- she fell out of a, uh, out of a window and landed on it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, we need to steal a key card to get in through the front gate, front gate, introducing us to the, uh, to the pickpocketing mechanic. Um, mm-hmm. and also, you know, showing us, yeah, there's this kind of path of shadow leading up to the security booth. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's worth talking about, uh, just, you know, past here. Um, the AI generally, we mentioned a little bit in the generalities, the patrols are very simple. Mm-hmm. Uh, these characters go on, like it's a little bit of like the humans or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, like they walk back and forth, they walk <laughs> left and right. Yeah. Um, you just have to kind of be okay with it. Mm-hmm. If you, if you start accepting rooms and the world as representations of things, I started thinking of these almost as like an icon for guard. Yeah. And, and their job is to walk back and forth. You eventually get overlapping patrol routes. Mm hmm. But that's about as complicated as it gets. Yeah. Um, This is not a game where, like, you will take somebody out and then a check-in time will come. And because that person isn't responding, you know, the people will go and check it out. It is not operating at that level. Nobody looks up. You know, like, the the, the AI is not... it, it is basic. It's like Pac-Man AI almost. It's like mm-hmm. they're, they're go- Pac-Man ghost in some weird way. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it is going for a simpler, more, uh, less representational version of that. Yeah. Um, you know, so we get in there, we get the, the key card, uh, you know, from the front gate, we sneak into the courtyard to the hotel and we meet our first stranger. Mm-hmm. Um, each level has one or two strangers. Um, they're just called that. They say two things. Mm-hmm. Uh, you go up to him, you ask him something and then they, they say another thing and that's it. And they're mysterious. They're kind of a collectible. Yeah, uh, in and of themselves. This one asks, there. "Oh, so who's pulling your strings?" And then says, "Oh, they sent another one." <laughs> yeah, I thought they sent another one. Yeah, uh, like um, there, there is a uh, the, 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 there's a big like undercurrent of you are not the only Jillian Cleary who's yes. going around, and stuff has been repeating to a degree. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Um, you can find a dropped PDA uh, that tells you that the security chief holds the master key for the hotel, so we're gonna need that. Um, he must be present at the search of any suite. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we are gonna sweep, we're gonna search without him. Um, sneak into the lobby uh, and read the guest book. Uh, and we find somebody named BC talks about the nightstand in suite one having interesting reading material. Yeah. Um, so that is that's our dead drop. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. and it's pretty easy to get up there. Um, there is a guard who is patrolling uh, kind of through the main lobby and then back into the hallway a little bit. Uh, mm-hmm. That's what this is. Um, but it's in there, uh, and you grab this and sweet one is just, uh, just behind the front desk there. It's a USB stick that has been, uh, that has been planted there. Now for getting into the presidential suite, the, the, like the main door to it is locked for me. Uh, that little detail about the security chief holding the master key and, you know, uh, needs, you know, they're always present at every search. Mm -hmm. I I didn't have a reckon for how, um, complicated this game was going to be at this point that detail made me think okay i need to get spotted and then run into this room which i have access to uh and then the security uh chief will come and be the person who searches it and i need to sneak up and grab the uh, grab the key off the back so i tried that a bunch of times (laughs) Mm -hmm. uh yeah it's, it's not operating at that level no 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 um, you, there are, it is operating at the level. There are multiple ways to do this. Mm-hmm. Um, I got the, the key from the security chief. Like I ended up going in the front door mm-hmm. of this. You can also sneak in through the balcony Yeah, um, I, for this. And there are civilians and guards here. Civilians you can knock out, uh, and steal from, which I do because I need it more than they do. Yes. 
Yeah. Um, but yeah, you have to get in. Uh, something that I love about this world is there's no natural vegetation. Uh, yes. <laughs> all of the trees and even houseplants are just these big kind of neon LED looking things, you know, yeah. a- approximating, showing an icon for a, uh, for, for a plant. It's neat. But that's where you plant the bug and then you just have to get back to the insertion point. Yep, yeah, uh, easy tutorial level. And then you get these uh, these downtime levels. Um, this is also a really important thing. This learns um, specifically from Deus Ex. Yeah. Bioshock 2 doesn't really do this, but one of my favorite things about Deus Ex is the Unaco levels, where there are stuff to do, there are people to talk to, there's treasure to be gained, but they're to relieve the pacing. Yes. You know, and this has, it looks like it has more missions than it does because half of them are these little story things. Mm-hmm. Um, you go back to the agency at Washington. Uh, you can go in and you check in. You talk to your handler, Vinod, uh, and he asks where you found the uh, the USB uh, stick. And you can lie to him at mm-hmm. this point. You're given how much uh, choice, how much you're going to trust Vinod. Yeah. Um, did you go up and talk to the boss? Not here. No. Um, I didn't go no. up until I was told to. If you go up there and talk to him, uh, you just get to learn that he's a real piece of shit. Oh, yeah. Uh, he's real like, you should smile more, honey. Don't take so- things so seriously. Get get that fat fanny over here. And Bleh. Get us some coffee. Like, he's real gross. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, your, your, your next question here, your bit tool, uh, has, mm-hmm. uh, has, has arrived. So you have to go down to, uh, go down to R and D to get this and you get introduced to the, uh, hacking mechanics here. And there's a practice like alert box to, uh, mm-hmm. to, to attempt to disarm. Uh, there are also the Hudson scrambler grenades. Uh, those are the yep. ones that make it so that, uh, they'll, they'll confuse the guards. Yep. And when you're ready to leave, you talk to the receptionist and have her take you, uh, get you a car to go home. Mm-hmm. And you go into your little apartment building, mm-hmm. uh, which you, because it's a good MSIM, you can break into your neighbor's house mm-hmm. uh, through there and steal their money. <laughs> um, you go to bed, and this is where you get our title sequence. Yeah. Um, for the, uh, with the song, with Cave Living, and the uh, little neon squares that pop up yeah. to tell us what we're playing. Yeah. Uh, taking us to a week later, uh, this mission called Shades of Grey. Uh, you've been deployed to Atlanta. Uh, your target is Mr. Grayside, who is an illic- illicit STEM manufacturer. Uh, this is Walter White. Uh, yes. It, in appearance, uh, it is a bald guy with a goatee, and he's manufacturing stimulants. Yeah, um, and his name is Mr. Grey. Yeah. You know, like, you know, essentially. Yeah. Um, but this doesn't add up with what you usually do. Right. Uh, and one of the things I like about this game is your character's not a dummy, mm-hmm. you know, with this stuff. Like, they immediately are like, why are we doing this? Mm-hmm. You know, what? how would a mole at this ambassador hotel know about this? And, like, this isn't really our thing. Mm-hmm. Like, this is this is small potatoes yeah. for our agency. And you're basically told, like, those are orders. Right. You know, you have to do it. Yeah. Uh, so what we need to do is we need to get access to Grayside's uh, computer network and dig up any dirt we can. Buyers, suppliers, lab records, DEA stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, we're out, we go outside of his apartment building. This starts with a little, like, staging area before we make our way in. Um, there's a coffee bar here. Uh, you can go there and you head to the roof and there's a stranger there. Uh, it says uh, 10,000 possible codes and he chooses that one. What are the odds? Mm-hmm. Uh, through there and you can pick up an anti-light grenade yeah uh, a real cool thing that can't exist yep <laughs> um, yeah. The, the, <laughs> yeah. The, these things are rare and they're very powerful yeah it's super cool because again you're you're basically invisible mm-hmm. in the darkness yeah um you know so you find up uh you can go in the front door of this but what kind of imsim player would you be mm-hmm. uh instead circle around for a second entrance always always um you can find a ladder at the back of the building that lets you skip the first f- through a uh, few floors and break in a little closer to your goal right uh this is the level that introduces cameras uh when you get up to the upper floors where the uh kind of server rooms are um uh, the cameras there's like a little bit of a cone that you can see as they're turning mm-hmm. um but uh they feel more perceptive than the guards do to me yeah yeah um and yeah. the guard patrols here are tighter as well this is where you start getting yes. some overlap yeah you're escalating a little bit um the uh when you get into uh the computer room to get the the stuff the hacking game has an x block in it Mm-hmm. Um, at first I thought this was a block that if you hit it, the alarm would go off and it's, I was like, yeah. that, that's too much. <laughs> it's just a block you can't destroy. Right. Um, so you have to, to avoid it, to make your way up. Um, you do this, you send an encrypted backup of the hard drive to the agency and then you get our twist here. Uh, one thing I also like about this game is this happens refreshingly early. Mm-hmm. You don't spend a lot of time doing missions for you, Natco. Yeah. Before it breaks bad. Um, Vinod radios you and says, listen, you have a new objective. <laughs> you need to get up to gray high gray sides penthouse, one floor up and detain him. By any means necessary. Right. Uh, you know, and you're like, 
that's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. I don't have the power to do that. That's unconstitutional. What has he done? Mm -hmm. And the director basically says, you know, listen, there's going to be enough evidence of that computer to put him away. We're just hedging our bets. You're under orders. Yeah. Uh, you know, j just hold him until another agent will come in and, uh, and, and extract him. Right. Yep. And you oh. go upstairs and he's just kind of milling around, <laughs> walking around in the dark, uh, yes. in the penthouse. Uh, <laughs> As you do. Yeah. It's pretty Walter White coded. True. Yeah. To, to be honest, he's, he's going back and forth. He's like, ah, ah, Jesse, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, and you confront him and he says like, ah, yeah, you know, you see the scar on my arm. Yeah. You probably have, you know, something like this too. I got a tracking implant just like you, but involuntarily, uh, yeah. <laughs> he went in for a hip replacement surgery. And while he was under the agency, put this, put this chip in him. You know, and he, yep. you know, he, he dug, he dug his out, but it was too late. Like the, you know, they, they already sent you for you for it. And yep. you end the level by telling him that the special agent in charge will arrive soon to interrogate him. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and, uh, so you get back, everything's a little, feels a little off and queasy. You talk to Vinod. He's like, yeah, that last mission is being covered up. They're deleting all records of it. And the director needs to speak to you right away. Uh, and you go up and you talk to director, uh, Fert Wengler. Uh, and you can talk to him, you know, and be like, what is Mr. Grayside talking about? And he's like, oh yeah, we've been tracking him for months, you know, uh, or you can also play like you're still loyal. Like I thought the mission went pretty well. And they're like, oh, you did everything perfectly. Mm -hmm. Then you had to go talk to him, you know, like, <laughs> and it's like, well, you told me to detain him. I'm like, yeah, but you didn't need to listen to him. You know, like it, it's, he's a real piece of, piece of shit. Yeah. This guy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I ask him like, Hey, you know, what's the deal with that tracking chip? He says, Oh, we've been tracking him for months. You know, the Austin pickup, you know, that, that <laughs> going into the, going into that hotel, like there was no informant, like that, what was on that USB was data that we you know got illegally. If we can make it look like an informant, you know, <laughs> left yeah, it there plausible deniability. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a, you know, it's a, 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 a cover story, like information laundering kind of deal. Right. Yeah. Um, and Grayside, well, that's, that's just a pilot project. You know, we plan to install millions of tracking chips on anybody who, you know, is possibly a person of interest. And you can say, yes. well, that is really fucked up. You know, the public needs to know about this. Uh, and the director says, well, We'll send your belongings to your mom, and then yeah. you can't. You <laughs> Sorry, can't, you feel that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you can't leave because you know there are a bunch of agents standing right outside the door to detain you and knock you yeah. out. Uh, and they're doing the. Uh, this is specifically Deus Ex, mm -hmm. you know, where you wake up in a small cell that is parts of the of an agency that you have not been able to get to. Yes. Before. Um, there's a little thing. The cafeteria was not open before. Uh, that is the first thing when you escape from this section, we're going to do this chapter called jailbreak. I recognize the cafeteria, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, Oh shit. Um, you know, so you're in a small cell, Vinod calls and says, they haven't told me anything about your disappearance. You know, you're in a detention center downtown. Uh, I'm going to open your cell mm -hmm. uh, for you and it opens your cell and you have to sneak out. Yep. You had to get your equipment, uh, your BIT and a bunch of other stuff from the basement mm -hmm. and then make your way out. Yes. Yeah. Have to cross through like a laundry room and through the, uh, the, like the cafeteria, uh, here mm -hmm. the cafeteria has cameras, but this also kind of introduces, uh, the fact that th they can't spot you if you're far enough away, like they, they, they won't, uh, catch you. They're at either end of like a basketball court size. Yeah. Yeah. Cafeteria. Mm -hmm. So you can be in the middle. Yeah. That too. Uh, there's a PDA on the, on, on a table here that has a code to the storeroom in the basement. Um, yep. and that gets you in, you get your, your, your bit, uh, but you also get, uh, silent stems. These are the ones that yep. make it so, you know, for a little bit, nobody can hear you if you run. Yes. Um, yeah. The, uh, one of the things that this game does as well. So you, this one, you need a code to get in mm -hmm. here because you don't have your, your bit. You can, uh, hack things brute force wise. There are also codes for a lot of the doors. Related to door codes. Uh, I also, so <laughs> last, last mission, I forgot to bring this up. Uh, the, the door to the, 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 the penthouse, uh, that has a code mm -hmm. lock on it. You can just hack it. But, uh, that stranger who said like, oh, 10,000 possible combinations. And he chooses that one. I was like, oh, like, what is that trying to communicate? So I, I just did one, 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 one. Two, 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 like just every obvious code mm. that I could and nothing. So is there any information on what that, what that code is, what he's trying to say there? I, I think he's just, no, I don't, not that I know of. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, I, I, I just assumed it was going to be 0451. 
is what oh, I was referring to. Yeah, I didn't not, try that one. Fuck. Yeah. I'm a I, don't, fake fan. I don't think it is that one. Yeah, <laughs> I know. We know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. I could stop pretending. <laughs> yeah. No, we, we, we're on to you. Um, so you can now, in this, uh, in this level, you can get to the Sally port. Uh, go through this vent to get the control room to open the Sally port doors and you step outside that ends the mission. Yes. Um, and you're off the grid. You get out, Vinod radios you and says, listen, you need to have your tracking chip removed. You have mm-hmm. to go to this clinic. Yeah. But we're in downtown Philadelphia and the, mm-hmm. you know, the clinic is a little train ride away and we can just go around, talk to people. Uh, and there are side quest things you can do. Uh, which end up being alternate ways to get there because you have to ride the train. You need a rail pass and there are a few different ways to get it. Like there is a punk girl who's trying to leave town with her girlfriend. You know, the surveillance is just too much. Um, and, and that surveillance that they're trying to escape from is also stopping them from escaping. Uh, they asked for a scrambler grenade, which I had access of. And she's like, Hey, mm-hmm. you know, thank you very much for this. Uh, here's, here's our rail pass in return. Cause they're gonna be escaping on foot. Uh, this yeah. pops up in news terminals later on. It's great. Yeah. All all the stuff you do, that little side quest things you do to help, you know, the common people, mm-hmm. it all has a little impact through news terminals you can read. Um, there are multiple ways you can get this. That's one way to get the rail pass. You can steal a rail pass. A guy dropped his hotel key card. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can make your way to his room and steal his re- uh, rail pass. You can, uh, and you can return his key card. He gives you a hundred dollars, even though he stole his rail pass. You can buy a rail pass. Mm-hmm. Um, like lots of ways to get a rail pass here. Yeah. I got an achievement um, for, uh, learning from the guy that he had dropped his key card, going and getting, g- getting the card, getting into his hotel room, stealing his money and then giving his card back anyway. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> and then getting the reward <laughs> money for it. Yeah. 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 I need it more than you. Mm-hmm. Uh, the train takes you to the clinic. Um, and the, uh, this is the thing where I think you not keeping a low profile, but not told you to keep a low profile changes how security works. Yeah. Um, at the clinic, you know, Vanad says, Hey, you asked the hotel clerk how to get to the clinic. That's a bad idea. They mm-hmm. recognize you. Like there's a thing out here. So security is higher. Yeah. What I think this actually does is put security outside the clinic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think there's always going to be security inside the clinic, but this makes getting into it a little bit of a task. Yes. Uh, you got to yeah. do a little bit of sneaking. I uh, uh, There's a ladder uh, to the right of the entrance down this long way uh, that has uh, you know, uh, guards patrolling around, uh, you know, ornamental uh, things that will break line of sight. So it's pretty easy to get up there. Uh, it's just a very long ladder. So you have to time your climb uh, so that you are up and out of line of sight by the time uh, the patrol uh, circles back around. Yeah. 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 Uh, and, and ultimately we're, we're finally, we're doing the ultimate challenge of a surgeon. <laughs> uh, we're going to, we're going to go in and perform the operation ourselves. Self-surgery. Uh huh. The quite possibly it's, the doctor's highest calling. It's the final frontier. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, so we go in, we do the surgery on ourselves. Uh, then we have to erase the records, go to the computer and destroy the chip yes. in the, um, the furnace in the basement. This is, you know, this is where we're going to speed up in talking about it because you're just doing neon struct. Yes. You're neon structing your way through the level. Uh, mm-hmm. There are guard patrols. You can break into stuff. You can get a little bit of money and a few items. Um, there are windows. You can go out on ledges to get into rooms, all that shit. It's, there aren't tons of individual set pieces mm-hmm. like this. It's just really tightly designed little levels Yeah, for this kind of thing. Yeah. So like the operating room is real tiny and it has a security camera, uh, pointing mm-hmm. at the, at the, at the table or the chair. Uh, and the, uh, the alarm box is also in that room. I do not know how you do this without having oh, an anti-light the, uh, grenade. No, you do the uh, camera first. Oh, okay. You, I, you know, at yeah. this, at this point I wasn't aware that you could directly hack cameras, I guess. Yeah. You hack, you hack the camera, then you can hack the security box. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, yeah. Right. I, yeah. I, I, I threw a, I threw a dark grenade. I, 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 I uh, turned on the dark, uh, mm-hmm. and, yeah. <laughs> and I, and I did the ultimate challenge of a doctor, uh, self-surgery uh, in artificial darkness. In dark. Yep. Yeah. The, uh, I also love the idea of somebody watching that camera and being like, huh, it's your <laughs> darkness. You know? <laughs> yeah. Those just oh. happen. Yeah. Well, shit. <laughs> it was All like right. that when I got to walk here. back and forth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. gosh uh the server room is a floor above um you have to uh shut down the floor's security in this far off room before you can get in there and reach the uh the the terminal again this is me complicating things because i didn't know i could directly hack cameras themselves a lot of cameras out of reach yeah uh you know so it's not every camera you can do it mm-hmm. uh if you can stand under it though that is a blind spot for the camera and you can you can point up yeah um and then the medical waste incinerator is on the first floor 
Um, you can go right there if you got the key cards uh, there. And when you leave, you go to the train station uh, to end the mission. Yeah. Here. Uh, and we're going to a friendly in kind of the resistance. Yeah. Uh, Vinod tells us that there's this uh, person named Alyssa Lawrence who runs the shelter at the old Basilica. Mm-hmm. And uh, she'll be able to help us. Listen, yeah. you know, they're on to me. I can't contact you again. The huge Unatco. Yes. Vibe. This is very Deus Ex. Yeah. Uh, you get there, you know, to this big church. And Alyssa says, like, hey, I'll have this driver uh, take you to Manhattan in the morning. Um, you're going to meet with one of our contacts, uh, a hacker named Unit. Uh, who lives in a safe house out there? Yes, unit. Mm-hmm. Um, the uh, and there's you know, there's a couple of punks in the basement. You can help with a little side quest to get some things, uh, generally. But you you basically find a room and sleep in it, mm-hmm. and it starts the next day. Um, you arrive at the safe house, uh, and the agency has beat you there. Yeah, uh, it's already been broken into. Broken into. And Alyssa says, hey, be careful. You know, it's not supposed to be like this. Yeah. You, um, unit yeah. is injured upstairs. Uh, if some agents broke in and subdued her, they're going to be back any minute along with the police. She's like, hey, uh, here's what you need to do. Um, use my break-in, uh, use your break-in tool to hack. Uh, <laughs> you need to use your break-in tool to hack unit's self-driving car in this garage that is near the mall. Uh, send that to Newark. Send it to, to New Jersey. Um, and then hack into the police department and create a stolen vehicle record. They will think that you came here and then stole my car and headed to New Jersey. That'll shake the tail for a little bit. Yeah. Smart plan. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, she gives you a key card to the basement. Uh, we can find her bug out bag and take that. It has a bunch of, you know, gear in it. Things she'd rather not be caught with. Yeah. You know, it it is a felony to have a Hudson scrambler. If they made a grenade that just made police blind, (laughs) like it would also be something they wouldn't just let you have. Uh, I think, I think you are talking to one, one, yeah, one milligram of fentanyl. It just uh, like in in an, in an open container. (laughs) Yeah. The the word fentanyl on a coffee cup is basically what does this. (laughs) Like, um, the, uh, the basement's real weird. It's, it's flooded. And there's one guy patrolling back and forth the flooded basement. Oh, it's, Uh, it's, yeah. it's not flooded. Uh, the, the ha- <laughs> in my notes here, the the, 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 safe, the safe house is flooded with guards. No, like, no it is flooded. The basement it? of this is, yeah, it makes water noises when you walk. Oh, huh. I don't remember that. Yeah. Sorry. I was, yeah. Sorry for no. assuming that you misread my notes. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, no, no. This, this game is still fresh in my memory. My yeah. Memories. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, but like, you know, just you walk into this big building that is suspiciously empty and then it is full of guards on the way out. Uh, yes. and you get down there. Uh, the, the, the police almost always have this covered, uh, and there's some tools down there. I forget what exactly you get. Uh, maybe there's an invisibility stem in there. This might be the first time you get the invisibility stem. Yes. Um, there, there's the, uh, the vi- invisibility stem, speed stem and silent stem and health stem. Yeah. And then the, uh, the Hudson grenade, the darkness grenade, uh, uh the teleport grenade. Yeah, we haven't the, gotten the teleport grenade yet. Yeah. That's the displacer one. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, you get what you need down there and you have to like get up and over an apartment building, like an adjacent apartment building to get to the part of town, to the block where the garage and the policeman, uh, the police department are, um, yes. you know, going up and over, um, you know, in the fire escapes where some guards are, uh, uh kind of looking around. This is where you get police that have the longer range mm-hmm. weapons. Yeah. This is where the encounter is where they'll, they'll murk you. There's a policeman, uh, there's a roof you can climb up on top of, and there's it's across from the police department. There is a police officer on the roof just staring at the ladder mm-hmm. uh, there. Um, so he will always see you. And that he's just there to watch that one point of ingress. Uh, if you just go up it, you, you get shot and die. Yeah. Um, so I had to use an invisibility stem to get up there because I wanted to see what was up there. There's a stranger, and this is the one that says... Isn't it weird that you can take an injection and it makes you invisible to other people's naked eyes? What's up with that? And then you click in and it goes, I think you already know the answer. Uh, so they knew you'd have to use an invisibility stem oh, that's to get great. up there. Yeah, yeah it's really good. Mm. Um, really good paranoia building. Nice. Yeah. Um, so the garage has two cameras and a somewhat inconvenient alarm box in addition to policemen who will sometimes walk up to either side of it. It's not that huge of a deal. You have the car and it zooms off. I, I was hoping that the guards would chase it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the police department's really small. Yeah. Uh, it's surrounded. Getting into it's a little bit hard. This is where you first run into security drones. Mm-hmm. Um, these little flying bot kind of ED things. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. They're, they're 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 high up. I tend to I tend not to look up there. So I would, yes. get, I would get spotted. I'm like, what the fuck? And it's like, oh, here's this uh, here's the security drone, like 25 feet in the air. Yeah, yeah. It's it's what they do instead of the people looking up. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but you get into the police uh, station, which is very small. Um, do this and file uh, the report mm-hmm. for this. Um, one of the things you can do in this, because it's a it MSIM, in addition to flushing toilets, is you can turn off lights. Uh huh. Um, because the AI is limited, nobody reacts to this. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, it means you can make it yourself invisible. You can go, it's dark now, like yeah. booth style and just, uh, you know, <laughs> it's dark. do whatever you need to do. These guards, yeah. uh, it's like parrots where you put the, put the blanket over their cage. Yeah. <laughs> I, I relate to that so much. That's the number one thing I relate to about parrots. Yeah. You know, even more than speaking. Mm-hmm. Like it just like you put a blanket over me. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, nice. I get the message. Fine. Quiet time. Yeah, no, this, yeah. Quiet time. Okay. I don't mind if I do. <laughs> No. Um, so we, we, we pass into the mall, um, and Alyssa calls saying, Hey, your backup plan, you know, we, when we came here, you know, we realized where, you know, where, where, where we were. Um, and it was like, Oh, I, I, I know some friends, you know, some people from college that I can go stay with. And Alyssa was like, no, yeah. uh, you don't want to endanger them. But because, you know, staying with the unit that fell through, you know, go, go, go and find them. Uh, this, uh, yep. this couple called the Bouchard. We have to. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is an ideal. They probably are going to track all your old friends, but we have to do it. Yes. Uh, and you go through a dead mall, Mm -hmm. you know, again, this kind of, uh, dark future post-capitalism distanced Mm -hmm. world. Like the, the, the mall is dead. Yes. And there's a kid in the food cart court who asks, uh, to talk to the girl for him who runs the hot dog stand, Mm -hmm. um, which you can do, uh, for them. And uh, he's just like, ah, you know, he's like, oh, he isn't my type. And then uh, he's like, I don't even like hot dogs. Uh, and then he's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. he's just pretending to like hot dog, hot dog after hot dog. <laughs> um, yeah. uh, there's a uh, there's a gun store upstairs here uh, that sells mm-hmm. the dipl- the displacement orbs. This is a grenade that you can throw when it explodes. You appear where that uh, grenade landed. Yeah, yeah, really cool, cool mm-hmm. idea for for a, a mechanic. I I don't really use them in this game. There's one spot uh, yeah, there, very much. There was one spot where I used them because the 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 direct way down was really long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can do it to avoid fall damage. Yeah. It's it's neat. It's a cool mechanic. Yeah. Um and there's a security guard you can talk to who asks for a hot dog. They can't leave their patrol. So adventure game ass shit. Mm-hmm. Um and you go do it and they're like, "Thanks, Jillian." Mm-hmm. And you're like, "Fuck," you know? And they're like, oh yeah, no, my, my Hudson identified you right away. There's a nationwide APB. I'm not going to narc you though. You got me a hot dog. <laughs> like this, you know, a low level security guard is not necessarily an ACAB. Yeah. You know, yeah. we're all, we're all getting fucked over by this system. Yeah. And you bought him a hot dog. Yeah. You showed a small kindness. Yeah. So uh, whatever. Yeah. What's, what, what concern is, is it of his? Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, so we head across this big courtyard to the condo, uh, and head up to, uh, meet the Bouchards. Uh, this is very clearly the couple from, f- from the, uh, the game facade. Yeah. <laughs> the, I, I love the way, uh, because they, they're not going to have people come in and everything, mm-hmm. you know, like you don't interface with a lot of people. So you do this thing as you're conversing that just fades out and fades back into later in the evening. Yeah. Like it's almost like this, uh, evening is shown in montage. Yeah. Uh, it's neat. Mm-hmm. Um, you can go play their piano, you have dinner with them, you make small talk and everything, but they drugged you. Yes. Uh, and I love this little bit as you're, you're like, did you drug me? And you're falling asleep. And the, you know, the, the wife says, um, you know, did we do the right thing? And the man says, we didn't have a choice. Yeah. You know, like they are also victims of this. Mm -hmm. I hear they get theirs in the end, Yeah. but they, they are ultimately like, it sucks that they did that, but like surveillance state, right? Yeah. Like, you know, the, 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 it's like the, uh, scene in Chernobyl. Yeah. You know, like I've been following you. See that man behind me. He's following me. <laughs> it's, it's a circle of accountability. Like we're all under the thumb of this. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, and then we go into a realm, Gary. I know the first of two uh, realms. Is, yeah. We gotta <laughs> be in the realm. There, there's, this is kind of the beginning fulcrum of the game getting less fun uh-huh. to me. I don't like realms. Um, the, uh, there are still good levels after this, mm-hmm. but like, it does feel a little bit like, yeah, this is, Mm-hmm. Using this is squeezing everything it can for the amount of plot it has. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you wake up in this room and you run into another version of yourself. Uh, she'll talk to you, saying like, "Hey, there's something very valuable in a uh, in a vault in this fortress that is outside. You got to go get it, uh, but you need to power up the vault first. Uh, and there's a little bit of business of like, you know, uh, oh, you you haven't seen me before, blah blah blah. That's going to come back later. Uh, yeah. So. You head out, and the facility is patrolled by other Jills, by other Jill Clarys, who are wearing these big demon masks. 
And they're called like things, if you go up to knock them out, they're called things like guilt and repression and shit like that. Mm, um, this thing is very that. obvious. <laughs> oh, yeah. They're called things like that. So that sucks. That's, you know, very obvious, right? Uh-huh. Did you notice, and this is skipping ahead, that in the uh, the struct um, headmistress's house, she has the demon masks? She has those masks. Her- I love that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's really good. Like, I'm like, oh, that's actually great. <laughs> this is all you're being fucked with. Yeah. Like, you never left the realm. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, so you go, uh, and, and get the generator room for the building. Uh, you do this and it powers up a huge keyboard. Jillian plays keyboard, Mm -hmm. uh, there in front of the vault and you find a PDA that has the combination. Uh, it's this poem. It says, your face is a mask. Your heart is a fraud. You name a song. I sang facade. Yeah. Um, and and those are notes. Yep. F A C A D E. Uh, and you've got to play on this, uh, big, big, the movie keyboard on the ground, (laughs) Mm -hmm. uh, hit those notes. Uh, thankfully, uh, I, 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 you know, I could, I could have figured out what these were, but I'm very happy that it did just, it labels them them for you. Yeah. Yeah. For non-music folk. Yes. So you get inside and it's the room you started in mm-hmm. uh, with another Jill who comes in to talk to you who's confused. Yes. You're now the first Jill. Right. Uh, dun, dun, dun. You answer the phone on the table uh, and you wake up in the apartment. It's Vinod calling you. Yeah. Uh, basically telling you what's going on. Yep. Here. And he says, hey, the Bouchards, they sold you out. Uh, Alyssa yep. is in custody. The whole network is going down. Uh, we have more agents who are on their way to detain you. Uh, oh, also, I have been burned for helping you. So I'm on the run as well. Yeah. Uh, and we have to get out of this condo building. We, you know, we literally just took the elevator up uh, to get here and walk down the hallway to the apartment. The elevators are out of service because, you know, they don't want you getting away. So this is really tough. You are going around in these circ- – you know, you're, you're trying to get to the stairwells in these circular hallways with really no place to hide. Yeah. Uh, not a whole lot of darkness either. Yeah. Um, each floor has a bathroom. Mm-hmm. You know, for for ducking into this is where uh, you know if I was trying to ghost this, this would drive me nuts. Yes, um, I need to just wait in an area for a guy to walk by and knock him out, mm-hmm. drag him in. Like you, you, this is like a real brick by brick, yeah, uh, level. Oh, yeah. and and I absolutely you know ended up just like okay, I just need to break for it. I'll be able to hide on the other side of this, and, yeah, and, and just yeah. ran. Yeah, this uh, doesn't quite pass the getting caught is fun test. No, no, the dishonor does, but it also doesn't fall into the Metal Gear Solid getting caught means waiting for two minutes inside a locker. Yes. Uh, you just run past, you can run to where you're at and hide in the dark. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, um, yeah, about three floors down, you get to the stairwell that's locked, but you can find a key card on the floor and use it to break into the apartment there. And that apartment, the window is open to so yeah. escape through it. And that ends the level. Yeah. And you're back out in this huge plaza in front of the condo building. Uh, you get a call yes. from somebody named Peter Tannhauser. There have been, um, news updates about Tannhauser and his media company, Tanco. I think it's called Tanko. <laughs> Tanko. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, he is the CEO of this. Uh, it's a, it's a media company. Uh, and he's, uh, like a Julian Assange stand in kind of guy. Yeah. Yeah. And he's like, listen, your name is all over the news, uh, for the crime of treason. You know, you can be like, I didn't do treason. He's like, I know, mm-hmm. uh, I can give you safe package, but I need some information that you might have. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to send an aircraft to pick you up. You have to get to the telepad or helipad on the roof of the mall. Mm-hmm. and light a beacon signal. Um, so now this level that was previously a downtime level mm-hmm. is now a stealth level. Yes. Uh, which is really cool. The plaza is really guarded. Um, there are police, flying drones, and these new gigantic robot uh, mech things yeah. here. Um, and we have to make our way through the mall uh, that we've been through that is now closed. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not hard. It's dark in the mall. Yeah. But I think it's cool to recontextualize this level that was a downtime level as an uptime level. Mm-hmm. And the st- its status as a dead mall, you know, just with not yes. a lot of stores um, <laughs> and the, all the lights out, and may end up making it a little bit easier than it otherwise would be, uh, which is yeah. nice. 
Yeah. Um, uh, so we have to get uh, up onto the roof. There's a PDA on the floor of the mall's mezzanine that has the storage closet code, which is what you need to use to get re- roof access. This is a game where also, if you head right for the roof, there's a note telling you where the code is. Yes. It's yeah. one of those things. Mm-hmm. Um, the uh, So you get up there, the roof is unguarded, you light the beacon, and the plane arrives. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, this takes you across the Atlantic. You're taken to London. Yes. Yeah. Um, when you get there, Tan Houser calls you. Uh, saying, listen, I'm trying to track down this information on this alliance of worldwide intelligence agencies called NEON. Yeah. Uh, the nameless echelon of the Order of Nations. Right. Um, and the director of your agency, this guy who's a huge dick, uh, who burned you, is part of it. Yes. Um, reports this leader known as the Eye. Right. Uh, what we need to do is break into a NEON server farm and delete all evidence of Tannhauser's activities. Uh, we have to do this before he will give a sanctuary uh, at his HQ in Hamburg. Uh, yep. You know, kind, kind, kind of dangling safety in front of you for doing something, you know, doing him a favor. Uh, you know, the idea being that he is, you know, constantly being reported on his personal life, et cetera. Once that gone, so, you know. Yeah. In, in, in he's his, a Hunter when, Biden figure. Yes. It's like one of those things. <laughs> like, he's, uh, he's, he's, it's mostly, it's not his, like, job, uh-huh. his day job. Like, the, the moral choice you're presented at the end of this game, which does not feel like much of one to me mm-hmm. because a, a worldwide surveillance state where everyone's tracked seems bad to me. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, uh, is this guy who is kind of a scumbag. Yeah. Like, the, his, what he's doing is probably ultimately for the good, but he's doing it to make money, mm-hmm. and he's also a shithead. Yeah. C- c- kind of yeah. like Julian Assange. Minus They're very the money. Julian yeah. Assange. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> like, <laughs> exactly. You know, should, you know like, shouldn't, shouldn't rot in an American prison, but also, I don't, I don't like the guy. <laughs> he also doesn't look, unlike Julian Assange, uh, he probably doesn't look like he just eats french fries. <laughs> you ever see somebody whose skin looks fucking translucent like that? Like, it looks like they haven't had a meal that isn't french if, fries if, if you, for, for like a decade? He, he has been able to go outside he's literally been in an embassy for no, like a i know decade. yeah <laughs> no, before that though even like file photos oh, of this man okay. like, make yeah. him look like yeah. he you he looks like uh uh sally from adventure brothers like his skin's <laughs> fucking it, yeah. it's, it's like thin wax yeah. Uh, that, yeah that's what you get for being dutch i think yeah oh maybe yeah, yeah. <laughs> i just wanted to make fun of a bad person yeah. with <laughs> shitty skin yeah that's true <laughs> Oh gosh, and I just wanted to make fun of a whole nationality. So yeah, come, there we come, go. Come after me! I'll hear you come yeah. with your fucking yeah. clogs. He doesn't even know him, Sims. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, uh, God. So he there's an informant. There's one of his uh, people, uh, Emin Veer Singh, who's waiting in the subway. I like the the casual diversity of this game mm-hmm. a lot. Yeah, you know, uh, Vinod, Emin Veer Singh. There's a lot of people. You know, there are very few just straight up. You know, they they don't they don't assume white Americanness in yes. this game. Yeah. Um, no. But this guy, uh, you know, he's somebody who wasn't aware that he was working for Neon, had no idea what they did. But when he found out, he's like, yeah, no, we, we got to bring this down. Um, he has the access keys uh, that we'll need to get into the building. Yes. Um, there are a couple of punks, uh, a couple of them, one of which is called a skinhead. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I was like, fuck these you know, Nazis. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's just a shaved head punk. I don't yeah. think he's meant to be a racist here. Um, he's like, listen, you know, if you want to prove that you're cool, go disable that security camera. Uh-huh. Uh, and you have to do a little bit of parkour. And they're like, cool, good job. Stay away from the pub. We're agents as well. <laughs> like we work for Tannhauser. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they give you some items. I went into the pub cause I want to see what would happen. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a reporter who's asking for your side of the story. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're uh, big shades again of deus ex of Joe green. Yeah. Um, the uh, muckraking tabloid r- reporter you can meet in the bar in Hell's Kitchen mm-hmm. in uh, Day Sex. Yeah. Um, so you hop on the train, you have to head to Hammersmith, where the, uh, where the server farm is. Um, this is a big, tough level. Yes. Uh, Tannhauser yeah. calls saying, uh, you know, th- th- this is a war. Neon controls everything. Um, you know, we have to erase the record so he can be more effective in the fight. Right. Yeah. Uh, and also says we need to find out who this the eye is. Uh, so if you are able to at all um, uh, you know, dig anything up, please do that. Yeah. And the reason why this is a hard level is because it has graduated security. Yes. There's like sector one and sector two and different guards will have different security cards. You mm-hmm. can't hack these doors. No. You know, um, so you can break into the room, uh, but we can't get to sector two. Right. That door is locked. We have to find somebody with that key card. Mm-hmm. Um, you head to the offices and read some PDAs that say only the executive director has that key card. Mm-hmm. And you learn about something called the struct, which yes. is like a holodeck. Uh, it's another realm. This thing lets you search information. It's basically a visual representation of a database. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like you just walk around an area, which is a cool idea. Yes. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so you get into sector two. I found a stranger who's sitting in a corner uh, and he gives me a cloaking mm-hmm. stem and says, take this. The last one dropped it when they got her. That's great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, and we get into sector two and get into the struct and now we're in another realm, Yeah, uh, which is a VR mission, mm-hmm. uh, basically, yeah. uh, here. And um, the, you know, there's some anti-chamber yeah. stuff happening. The like space yes. is doing weird things. So walk down a hallway and then turn around and it will be shorter. Uh, you'll be on a different floor, uh, you know, yes. it's, it's doing stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and you can go and talk to the way this is represented. I like a lot is that everyone's records uh, the complete records of their personhood are treated as a virtual agent of mm-hmm. themselves. So you can go and you can find another Jill. This is everything the agency knows about you that be- talks to you like an AI yeah. based on that stuff. Yeah. She's standing yeah. in a, in a room that is made to look, look like your apartment. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she gives the option to erase my records, you know, or mm-hmm. you can let the truth stand. I was like, I don't know. I don't want to become a non-person. I'm taking this whole thing down anyway. So I just, I, I let that there. Um, yeah. I, I also didn't want to take the one. It felt like they were s- steering me toward. I have no yeah. idea what the, uh, what the, um, you know, it, uh, result is I, of this. It affects the ending slide, the equivalent of ending slides probably. Gotcha. That we have in this. I also didn't do it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know. I can't remember how it does it. What happens? Fuck them. I shouldn't um, have to give up everything about me just because they suck. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like he's the one who sucks. Uh, the, uh, so there's it's some pretty tough patrols to get into the town Tannhauser record. Um, you get into that and you get into Tannhauser and you can be like, Hey, what is it that he wants deleted? And he's like, Oh, or deleted he's like, oh, association with radical groups, workplace harassment, speed addiction. <laughs> you know, like he's a real piece of shit. This yeah. guy, yeah. you know, um, and you uh, delete him, uh, but then when you leave, the hallway leads to this office that has an open sky, and we see the eye. Yes. Uh, Beatrix uh, Chung. Yeah. There, who yeah. is the leader of Neon. Yes. Uh, she greets you, uh, or the agent who represents all of the information about her greets you. Um, and oh. we find out, you know, it's just Beatrix Chung. Um, uh, goes by Trixie to her friends. Uh, and she is the British consul to Germany. Uh, she spends most of her time at the embassy there. Uh, she is the one who founded Neon in 2001. Uh, yeah. And she recently um, traveled to an undisclosed location uh, in Hamburg, uh, along with a bunch of other people. Uh, and that's probably where you can find her. Yep. Uh, so this ejects you out into the real world. Um, and Tannhauser calls, like, good job. You need to dispose of that access card, though. Um, and you can suggest planting in the executive director's office to mm-hmm. frame them. Yeah. Uh, which, and he's like, good thinking. Yeah. Uh, you do that, you get to the roof, Tannhauser's pilot's waiting for you. Um, and make your way out is a little bit tougher. Um, there are new guards, new mm-hmm. guard patrols, the security systems are all rearmed. They know something's happened. Yeah. You know, um, you have to make your way up these stairs, which is difficult. Yeah. Uh, kind of in the yeah. lobby of this, uh, of the, of this facility, uh, getting up is tough. Getting down is also tough. This is where I use the one time I made very good use of the displacer bomb, uh, yeah. which was just like, okay, I, like I just need to <laughs> skip all of this going around and, and ducking into offices and then just get to the first floor and, you know, bug out. Make your, yeah, make yeah. your way and get out there. And then there's a ladder to get up to the roof. Yes. Yeah. Um, and this brings you to Hamburg. Uh, Tana, as you get there, Tanizer gives you another job. He's like, I may have you do something else before I can meet you. He's also stringing you along. Yeah. Um, you need to find Beatrix and, uh, give her a message from me mm-hmm. there. Yeah. Um, this is in a nightclub that you yeah. go into where people are kind of partying <laughs> by which I mean, walking back and forth mostly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, cool. Mu- well, cool music plays. Uh, our, our contact is Mr. Schaefer. Um, in this nightclub that we landed on, he's like, "Oh, he's the he's the, <laughs> he's a drunk American. Uh, uh, you'll, you'll 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 recognize him because he's going to be you know boasting about driving a bunch of blindfolded people to a location outside the city. You know, neon is so secret that not even the people who are in it can know where these meetings are. Right? Yeah. Uh, the contact isn't the American. Mister oh. Schaefer tells us about the contact. Yes. Is an American. Okay. He tells us to go and find the cab driver, and and we're like, who is he? He's like, he's not going to be hard to find. He's wearing a red shirt, and he's a loud American. He's the only one here. Yeah. Doing yeah. this, uh, so you find somebody with a red shirt uh, there who is a real scumbag. Yeah. Uh, and does, does one of the one of the more direct pickup lines that exist? Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, he he he, he, know, he he starts doing the carpets and drapes thing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Which, which is for people who don't know, that's just you, your first opening move is like, Hey, do you dye your hair or is your pubic hair like that as well? Yeah. You know? And like pubic hair is an advanced 
that's a that, that's, that's, that, that's advanced knowledge. You know, yeah. that's I, I love it. I'm, I, I it's not like I don't want to know. Yeah, I yeah. get it. But you don't well, just ask. Also, also, it's um not representative. P- pupes don't yeah. always match. What's yeah? I don't no, know. yeah. You can you can you can do a lot of stuff with them. Yeah. You know? uh, it's just it's a real weird thing to go directly to. It's not quite like. Hey, you know, what if I were putting my finger in you? You yeah, know, yeah. It, it's, it's, it's pretty close to that though. You know, it's like, Oh, you before, know? Oh, before you sit down, let, let me, uh, let, let, let me wipe that seat off. Uh, and then, yeah, you, and then, yeah. then you wipe <laughs> like your you face. The mustache. Yeah. yeah you the mustache would. rides thing. Yeah. 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 Come yeah. on. 25 cents. Yeah. Um, yeah. And Jillian says, I will murder you if you finish that line. <laughs> uh, you know, you convince him. He's like, yeah, no, there's this location. It's basically like a fortress. There's this panic room in it. Uh, you know, and we have to make our way there. We go to the, t- the driver outside and leave. Yeah. Uh, and this is the final exam mission, uh, called yes. to gouge, you know, taking out the eyes of the world, um, at this big hitman like, uh, you know, fancy mansion looking place. Yes. Um, Tannhauser radios and says, if Chung fled to the pan- panic room, the only way you're going to get in there is to turn off the power and use a fail safe key card. Um, you're also going to need to disable any wireless transmitters so she can't call for help. Yeah. Um, and it is a final exam. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is, you know, I think this level is really good. Yep. Um, here we, we spend a little bit of time in realms, but now we're back, baby. Mm-hmm. Um, it's tough. There are two backup transmitters. Uh, one's on the first floor. Um, the second one's on the second floor balcony. And they're all just kind of patrolled in interesting ways. Yeah. You have a, a series of interesting goals to yeah. do that take you to the far corners of this mansion. Mm-hmm. And there, uh, there are a lot of like little places that make sense in this because the yes. key, the key card for the fail safe uh, is upstairs in an art gallery, uh, which yes. is an interesting space to get around because it's very brightly lit, but there's very, you know, there are a lot of walls up to display the art. So you've got to, you've got uh, uh, very short lines of sight. highlight cover. Yeah. Yeah. This is also where she has the demon masks. Yep. The same ones you saw from your mind <laughs> realm. Uh, very cool. Yeah. Um, you know, you get there, uh, you get the circuit breaker uh, there, which yeah. is outside to turn off the power. <laughs> I had so much trouble here. finding this, Gary. I went around, I, 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 I sandmanned the entire level. I was like, where the yeah. fuck is this thing? <laughs> um, <laughs> I never thought to look outside. There's a PDA uh, that, I, that I admittedly didn't find until way too late that said, hey, for security's sake, you want to move that circuit breaker inside the house? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, it's, it's from a contractor. It's yeah. not for security sake. It's for weather. Yeah. The, which, because a circuit breaker being outside is the dumbest idea in the world. <laughs> um, I ended up getting this on the way in. Oh, okay. Uh, like my, my 0451 instincts, you always circle a building before entering. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, the, uh, you get there, you eventually get in the panic room and you confront Chung. And what's kind of interesting is she's a true believer. Yeah. Um, you know, Hey, stop the surveillance program. She's like, I'm not going to do that. No, no. You know, uh, this manhunt that's happening to you right now has nothing to do with this. The director, your boss, falsified these charges and put the U.S. government after me. Like, he fucked up. Mm -hmm. He's a bad egg. Um, If you go along with, you know, this security program is too important to get rid of. Yeah. But I can give you a little bit of carrot. If you play along, um, I'll make you the new director of the original agency within a year. Yes. You just have to be quiet. Yep. Um. And, you know, she is uh, ultimately pretty reasonable about this, too. It is your decision. It's not something she's going to press you into. Uh, yes. You currently hold all the cards. So she says, I'm not going to force you to make a decision now. You know, go talk to Tannhauser before you make your decision. You yeah, know, see and, what kind of piece of shit that guy is. Yeah. You know, says, we use these secrets to save lives. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and Tannhauser uses them for profit. You know, just uh, yeah. under, understand the greater good here. Right. Yeah, which which is, you know, that's the argument for any kind of yeah, unethical, yeah. you know, surveillance uh, kind of thing. And it's one of those things where it's not like, obviously, it's the wrong thing, mm-hmm. but it's not the weakest argument in the world. No, right? like, no. If you, if you actually sit down and do, you can imagine cases in which it is a good use. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's it, you kind of run into like, you know. Will an AI say the N word if it will save a million <laughs> live shit? Yeah. But you can see, you can, you can think of situations like, okay, is it worth like having one person have a security chip if it saves yeah. 50 lives? Right. You know, what is it worth having, you know, a thousand people have a security chip if it saves 50,000 lives, mm-hmm. you know, things like that. Like you, you can play with it. Yeah. As an ethical idea. Yeah. And, you know, protecting people is not a bad thing. Um, and, you know, the, 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 the means for that also are not inherently bad. The, you know, it comes down to like, who do you trust with this power? Is it possible to trust anyone with this power? Should yeah. this power be as concentrated as it is? Should there be no, uh, clear, you know, uh, uh, transparency or insight into it? Yes. Right. 
you know, very deus ex yeah. stuff. Like, you know, and that's why I always do the benevolent God King route of a base. Because <laughs> it's like, no, you shouldn't trust anybody except for, uh, you know, Adam Jensen. Right. Uh, Adam Jensen can be trusted for this stuff. <laughs> he didn't ask for the power. Um, you go to Tanco, uh, the HQ, and we talked to Tanhauser. It's a real rinky dink operation. Yeah. You know, you're like, you're very impressed by how just like it's, it's real small scale. Um, and he says, hey, will you give me this information to expose Neon? Mm-hmm. Uh, and I do it. Yeah, you know? yeah. Uh, and he says, "Will you will you join me?" And I also say no. Yeah, because <laughs> he does workplace harassment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I I know you, man. Uh huh. <laughs> like, yeah. Your your AI construct told me what you do to your coworkers. Uh huh. And it's like, yeah, yeah. You 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 you've got your fight. I played my I played my role in it. This mm-hmm. you know cannot cannot be my my you know, my my life as well. I'm gonna go and you know it's <laughs> all of this wasn't about finding a new job. It was about clearing my name and getting free. So here we go. Yeah, yeah. and and exposing this this horrible yes. thing. Yeah. Um, you get the credits, uh, and then you walk through this little museum uh, after 15 years where there are models for the different characters that give you their epilogues. Mm-hmm. Um, I like the idea of this. Some of these characters, I gotta be honest, I don't give a shit about. Yeah. yeah. Like there, there's the little one-off characters and it feels a little bit like it's hard for me to imagine the use case of somebody who is wondering, mm-hmm. you know, what Singh was up to. Yeah. You know, after this, mm-hmm. um, it, it, it oh. is, it is a neat way to, uh, to replace ending slides. Right. I think so too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, our Jillians, cause we did the same thing here. Uh, we're, we're in Bronte town, mm-hmm. um, went on to found a private security firm, made a lot of money. Uh, the Bouchards, uh, tried to claim that they sheltered you uh-huh. by doing this and they got holes poked in that. So they yeah, out theirs. they're trying to sell books. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Chung just restarted neon. Yeah. Like yeah. keeps trying to redo it. Like she is a true believer in this thing. You know, she's, and, uh, Tan Hauser just made tons of money. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's the instruct. It's the instruct. Yeah. Uh, I wish yeah. that it uh, held the juice that it has longer, you know? Yeah. Um, it, it by no means perfect. Yeah. Right. Like th- this is, this is not, but you, I think that it's a calibration of expectation thing to not go into this expecting perfect. Like mm-hmm. if you are somebody who can think about like, Oh, I want a bite sized version of this. Yeah. Yeah. I think this is a really good version of it. Mm-hmm. Um, I've always been a real cheerleader for this game. I, found you know finding out that Pittman uh you know had to quit game dev uh because this stuff happened and just you know liking this game a lot and at least being interested in his other games like I think there's something interesting there. Mm-hmm. I've always wanted more people to pick this up. Yeah. Um if it sounds like something that's for you, give it the waft bump. Yeah. You know? Please. Yeah. I'd love to love to throw some money into this guy's pockets. Like it just uh you know I don't usually feel parasocial for indie developers and everything, but it I I like the world in which this was a success. And David Pittman got to do a slightly bigger scale, mm-hmm. you know, M Sim and then a slightly bigger scale M Sim. Yeah. You know, like the uh, it's almost like a you know, a view into an alternate world where like indie M Sims are viable. It's not just streets of rogue. Right. You know? Uh no. And I think there's a lot to thematically chew on for being such a simple story, mm-hmm. adding in those little plausible doubt things and making the aesthetic work so well with what it's trying to get you to think about mm-hmm. is it's chewy. It's chewier than you might think. Yes. You know, no, no. Um, I like it. You know, uh, it, it, it is a, it is a fun little stealth game. Um, and you know, it is always good and neat to see the elements of a genre or style stripped down to their essentials and see if they still yeah. stand. Yeah. 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 Agreed. Mm-hmm. Uh, thanks everybody for listening to this. If you are not demographically identical to us and you have a project you'd like us to shout out, uh, please send me an email at gary at duckfeed.tv. Um, include relevant links, your pronouns and such. Uh, this episode, we're going to uh, make a shout out to uh, one of our Slack members uh, named Zindios. Uh, who has started a podcast with his husband uh, called Speed Radio, which is sounds like bonfire side chat for Sonic. Oh. Uh, going through every single Sonic game in release order. Okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, it is, it is one of those, one person's a big fan, the other person is new uh-huh. to it, which I think is a really fun uh, dynamic. Mm-hmm. You know, one person hasn't played them at all. Okay. So, so somebody who likes Sonic enough to play all of them in release order. <laughs> and let me, let me emphasize a couple... Uh, words in that all of <laughs> them in release order. 
Yeah, uh, I, you yeah. know, it, it, it's, uh, it, it, this immediately makes me like, okay, so are they talking about like Sonic Labyrinth? Are they talking about Tails Racing? Like, like how deep are they going into the Game Gear catalog? Are they talking about the I Master System ones? I assume the yeah. Game Gear is on the menu, but I don't know. Yeah, it's a new podcast. Uh, yeah. Get in on the ground floor. Uh, new uh, new episode, kind of the episode zero, just dropped uh, last month. May mm-hmm. 19th. Uh, again, it's called Speed Radio. You can find it on Spotify, YouTube, Apple Podcast. Yes. Speed Radio. Speed Radio, um, baby. Comes out every two weeks. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, memories that they're, they're both working full time. I was just like, oh, that's what we did too. Yeah. yeah. And everything. Yeah. Nice. I wish them well. I hope this, uh, I hope this goes well. Like I'm not a Sonic Andrew, uh, but also, you know, I'd be lying if I said I didn't have a little bit of a morbid fascination for every release in order. Uh-huh. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's a good idea for a show. I think so too. Yeah. Um, if you have thoughts about Neon Struct or the life and suffering of Sir Bronte or uh, our premium episode, The Legend of Zelda, A Link Between Worlds, you can write in uh, at duckfeed.tv slash contact about them. I believe you have just a day or two at this point. The deadline for those is always the 15th of any given month. Um, yeah, uh, click the WAF button there and write in. You can also do that for uh, July's games which are Paper Mario, The Thousand Year Door. We're doing two episodes on that. And the premium mm-hmm. episode for that month is Quick, the original Quick. Yeah. I don't think anyone's asked this, but I can imagine somebody asking it. Uh, we are covering the new release yes. of Thousand Year Door. Uh, I don't know what's different. I've never played Thousand Year Door mm-hmm. before, um, but we are doing the new one. It's a well-regarded okay. re-release, so... No. Um, if you like us, if you want to hear those premium episodes, so Quake, Link Between Worlds, all of our old uh, premium episodes, you can do so by becoming a patron. Go to patreon.com slash duckfeedtv. $5 a month gets you bonus episodes, a bunch of exclusive content, access to our dispatch Q&As, mm-hmm. uh, roundups, uh, the ability to ask us questions for the dispatches, all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Uh, we like to think that it is a good value. Uh, if you can't do that, please leave a rating or review uh, or uh, boost us on social media. Yeah. And join us in thanking our producer, Gwen. Thank, Thank you, Gwen. Gwen. Uh, what do they do until next time? Watch uh, out for until next time. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> uh, uh, watch out for some of those darkness grenades because that seems real neat. Keep an eye open for me. I would love one of those. Oh, yeah, yeah. I would never use it. Any any single use, like super cool item like that, I would never use it. Oh, yeah. Even I'd want to so bad. Mm-hmm. You know, like too good to use only, like I only can resist that in video games. Yes. Yeah. You know. 